So I think there's a, there's a component of critical reflection on folks who are working in the food movement to look at how both personally and organizationally the, the ways that we behave, the ways we operate, the attitudes that we hold um, may carry hallmarks of repression that we're not aware of. So that's really one of the first steps. And then the second step, I think, is, is, is around committing vocally, boldly, to the kind of principles that food sovereignty organizations advocate, which really are systems-challenging principles and cause discomfort. They cause discomfort for those of us who are benefiting from the current way that the system works. And if we want to change that system so that it is actually equitable, we have to be able to profess those principles and then figure out how we act on them in both individual and corporate ways. We have to begin the practice of critically examining how systems of power and oppression work in our society on both interpersonal and cultural and institutional levels and owning the ways that we participate in that. It's a hard thing to do. It, it's, again, it's uncomfortable, can bring up all sorts of feelings of guilt, and it's the foundation of systems change. We can't do that without really looking at the values and principles and assumptions that are operative in our world and changing it from the roots in order to create a different kind of system.